If you're currently working on this piece or plan to learn it, please check out the link in the description, uh, a link to the full course, full comprehensive course on this piece where I will speak about many, many other aspects like uh, resolving technical difficulties, memorizing the piece and many, many other things. So check out that full course on the whole piece, uh, all three movements of it. And now let's speak about the style a bit, about interpretation a bit, because we all know that Mozart is a very special composer, that classical music of that time is a special genre, is a so-called elegant style, and we all know that Mozart should sound elegantly. But how exactly do we reach uh, this quality of sound, this character, and how we generally approach music of Mozart? So there are a few tips that I would like to discuss with you. First of all, the first topic is, of course, balance between hands. Left hand obviously should be uh, much, much lighter than the right hand, and we achieve that working on efficiency first. So what is very important here is not to hold the weight of the hand. So you see, in that, in that case, it sounds very robotic and you get tense. So what we have to learn at first is to lean towards each key gently, but with a full weight, so your arm is absolutely free, and you dive into each key, transferring the weight to the next finger. So you have to learn how to walk on piano. It's absolutely the same process when you walk. You transfer the weight between legs, and of course you don't keep your legs tense, because you can't really move if your legs would be constantly tense. So you have to release all the fingers that are not working at the moment, transferring the weight from finger to finger and of course remembering about stability in the knuckles and released wrist so we have to train that ability of gaining support here in the knuckles and remaining flexible in the wrist that's essential then of course we dive into the keys uh, slower so in order to play softly we just have to press each key slow enough if I would press the keys faster, I would immediately get a stronger sound. So our dynamics depends on the speed with which we move the key. Slower hit, faster hit. That's it. That's the only secret uh, of dynamics on piano. And the right hand, of course, is a much more, I don't want to say louder, but I would say rather more luminous. It should be just lighter should be full of light while your left hand is a bit muffled is a bit in the shadows it's quite different to historic pianos for example on historic pianos of uh, mozart time of early beethoven time we would have to also support our left hand um, because those instruments, they sound much, much uh, differently. But on modern piano, if I would try to play both hands on the same dynamical level, it sounds uh, very bad, it sounds very um, not convincing, because registers mix, so we have to artificially separate them dynamically. Then, of course, uh, the second biggest issue in Mozart is phrasing and impulses. So what happens very often is when we have such a monotonous rhythmical accompaniment, we see groups of four notes, four notes, another four notes, and again. So we start marking each beginning of each group. We start marking strong beats. And it immediately sounds very primitive. And uh, in order to avoid this, we have to learn to think differently. We have to shift our thinking from a formal thinking, how we perceive the score, into the musical thinking, how the music is organized. And I have a special video um, about that issue on my channel. Please check it about the Hainan you know, exercises and musicality. But uh, just quickly, uh, a quick reminder that we always have to perceive this music like spirals. So one, two, three, four, one. 
So we always start from the second eighth note. We start our motifs from the second eighth notes and we lead them toward the next strong beat. Pa 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 pa. So in this case, music immediately starts breathing, and as you see those middle notes, pa pa pa, I love you, I love you, please call me, I miss you, pa pa pa. They are actually more expressive. They are uh, more expressive than strong beats, and we of course avoid impulses on strong beats. That's a golden rule. <clears throat> Instead, we follow phrasing. So, for example, here we have the first. Mm, phrase of two bars with a climax in the middle. So this is a dominant seventh chord. And this harmony by default is more tense than C major. Music is always a relation between tension and release. So here we create a tension towards that harmony. This is our dominant seventh chord which is by default more tense than its resolution. So we create a nice shape, two bars long, uh, nicely shaped phrase. Again, of course, I'm slightly exaggerating right now in order to make it very clear. And then, and then of course, um, all these scales. Mm. What is very important here? Um, two aspects. First is how classical or how romantic you want it to sound. I prefer always a more pearly, more precise touch in Mozart. That's why I always play Mozart. Well, not always, but quite often I play Mozart with a more rounded fingers than, for example, Chopin. So in Chopin, I would rather use flattened fingers for um, passages like this. But in Mozart, I would rather use a more rounded um, shape of the hand, but of course, avoiding tension, avoiding over rounding. But nevertheless, and another uh, thing, of course, about legato. For example, if you want to play that legato, Although I don't have any legato in my um, Baron Writer copy of uh, this uh, piece, in the or text we don't have any legato. So technically, we could also play that non legato. <laughs> technically, we could do that. But if you want to play it in a more lyrical, in a more legato way, <laughs> the question is how romantically or how classically you want it to sound because if you want a classical legato we would have to release each finger precisely when we hit the next finger <laughs> then it would sound in a more classical way uh, romantic way of legato is overlapping sound so we first hit the next sound and then we release the previous so they slightly gently overlap There are sometimes you can feel some seconds. So, this is a romantic legato, and this is a classical legato that sounds actually in romantic music that would already be called non legato, but in classical music it's a legato, but a pearly one. And of course, uh, shaping, shaping all these uh, passages in order to avoid a uh, formal sound. Very important. Still playing with the dynamics, still rounding them on top, making them very expressive on top. Another very, very important uh, aspect in Mozart's um, pieces is again, it's, it's about tension and release. So we always have some harmonies that are more tense and harmonies that are less tense. So for example here, we should always very carefully treat all the resolutions when we have, for example, dominant seventh chord and its resolution. The resolution should be always like twice 
as soft or so avoid an accent on the last note that would be unacceptable absolutely very smooth resolution or for example here hmm. Hmm. so that would tom, pom, pom. that would be a resolution in this case that's why we would play f sharp um, softer or for example uh, bar number 25 we would always avoid an accent on the resolution this is not acceptable because this chord is more tense and this is its resolution we we don't have to play it like much 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 softer if the the spot is very vibrant is the spot is very intensive we can play it like solid but not louder not accented accenting it or for example also here this is our dominant seventh chord its resolution so the resolution is always softer next point is of course about um, touch and articulation so as I've told scales are always um, scales sound always better with m rather rounded fingers and of course uh, playing legato we release the fingers immediately but of course it's very important to remember about smaller articulation so what makes for example this music sound not exactly in style but uh, in a rather romanticized way is when people neglect all these smaller slurs for example you might feel how actually conventional this sounds but if I would just react on that small slur in bar number 14 our second theme just release and be faster I don't have to do it incredibly short no just releasing the finger so there is a small gap small moment very subtle moment of silence and then immediately this music sounds much much more vibrant yes or for example in bar number um, 23 same thing if I would play just it sounds like really boring like really <laughs> terrible but but if I would just gently uh, disconnect fingers between the slurs it would immediately sound more interesting more vibrant more elaborated and this is what we need we need a very elaborated approach full of very interesting not not disturbing very subtle but not nevertheless very elaborated details then music of mozart is full of um cadences like this one almost in every piece you will have a cadence like this one So uh, with Alberti basses in the, in the um, left hand and with a typical chord progression with a trill and its resolution. So here we also have to remember about playing the left hand very lightly and also no impulses so we don't mark any beats. It also helps a lot to um, add pedal when you do crescendo through the trill so you start the trill without the pedal and then you add pedal at the second half of the bar as a variant of course you can uh, add pedal before in the previous bar and play that um, engine part softer what is very special about this movement I've um, spoken about this in a, another lecture uh, that you might find in my comprehensive course if you're watching this on YouTube uh, but uh, what is really special about this movement is that the recap section in bar number 42 it starts in F major not in C major because um, following the rules following the like, let's say traditions Mozart would have to uh, finish the previous uh, development section in G major and start a recap section in C major so 
um, the spot from bar number 39 through 42 would have to sound like that actually. <laughs> have to end in C major but instead of that hmm, we find ourselves in absolutely uh, miraculous enigmatic and very subtle F major hmm. so it's a very important point and we have to interpret it in a very special way uh, for example, creating a crescendo through that section. <laughs> and then taking time. <laughs> and making sure that our left hand is as soft as possible. Then, of course, very important to release all these quarters precisely. So you have to know precisely with which finger, palm two, with which finger in the right hand you have to release your left hand. Mm. Thanks for watching, I hope that this was helpful and if you want to uh, discover many more tips about this piece and if you want a more comprehensive advice, please check out the link in the description to the full course. See you next time.